mostly veterans. Jani Brome, the center transfer from Moorhead State, trying to get healthy again. He's got a huge size advantage tonight. Here's Green, shot clock at seven, and a challenge two. Zach Jasper coming off and knocking down a tremendous three-point shot off of him and KD Johnson struggling in the previous game, Tom. McMahon wide left with his first attempt, but another offensive board for Winthrop. Obviously, Auburn's departure, Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler, two big bodies onto the NBA. And another, now third offensive rebound for the Eagles. And picking up right where Kessler left off. It's Broom with the block. Push ahead. And an easy bucket for the veteran Chris Moore. Yeah. The restaurant over there, bow and arrow, you bet. <laughs> Come back on the spot. Should have rehearsed the open, I suppose. But I think he did pretty good for the first time this year. All right, Winthrop's got wrestling. the basketball. They're 2-1 on the young season. They open with a loss on the road at Penn State. The Nittany Lions shot the lights out. In fact, most of the Eagles' opponents have done the same. And an offensive board early on. And a beautiful putback by Kelton Telford. 6-7 center for the Eagles of Winthrop out of the Big South Conference. Here's a look at the starters for Auburn. They're going with mostly veterans. Jani Broom, the center, transfer from Moorhead State. Trying to get healthy again. He's got a huge size advantage tonight. Here's Green, shot clock at seven, and a challenge two. Zach Jasper coming off and knocking down a tremendous three-point shot off of him and KD Johnson struggling in the previous game, Tom. McMahon wide left with his first attempt, but another offensive board for Winthrop. Obviously, Auburn's departure, Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler, two big bodies onto the NBA. And another, now third offensive rebound for the Eagles. And picking up right where Kessler left off. It's Broom with the block. Push ahead. And an easy bucket for the veteran Chris Moore. Yeah, that's that pace that we talked about a little bit earlier. This is where Winthrop is going to have to be patient. Coach Prosser talked to us about that. They're not a team that's going to be intimidated. Already have been to Penn State earlier this year. Coming off of a midweek win against, or pardon me, weekend win against Middle Tennessee State. Won that one by eight. They led by 19 early in the second half. Nice slip. And another block by Broome. He's got two here early on. Wendell Green this time, and he gets it to go. What a start for this Auburn team, which did not shoot the ball well Friday night against USF. Bruce is four steps onto the floor trying to get his guys to play D now. <laughs> and an Auburn takeaway. Wendell Green averaging 18 points, four boards and four assists here early in the season. And after giving up the first bucket of the game, Auburn's on an 8-0 run. Broom inside. Yeah, right now, Winthrop just outmatched Coach Prosser, allowing his team to play through this right now. And this is what we talked about. You have to be cautious here. Run down some shot clock if you're Winthrop. This is a Winthrop program, which has played for the last three Big South Conference tournament titles. They've won two of them, upset by Longwood last year. Picked to finish second in their league this season. And an Eagles turnover will give it right back to Auburn. Well, Auburn has had the best record in the SEC over the last five years. This fan base is one of the reasons why. Wendell Green, absent the losses of guys like Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler, has truly stepped up into an unbelievable role this year. It's been a great start for the junior from Detroit. Transferred in from Eastern Kentucky. It's an embarrassment of riches in the backcourt. Katie Johnson just checked in coming off the bench. We'll also see Chance Westry for the first time this season tonight. Here's Katie Johnson. Another glass cleaner by J. 
Janiya Broom. Is it loud in here or just our headsets? What'd you say? <laughs> it's definitely loud in here. I think Broom got a piece of that one, but the putback goes. Broom, first miss of the night. And taken in by Lane. Yeah, nice answer by Michael Moore on the other end. He's now competing with Janai Broom. Those two bigs starting to go at it on the interior. Another air ball from the perimeter. Not how Winthrop wanted to start. And a push ahead. Broom in traffic. He's sweeping up the floor with Eagles. Corner three, and that's the first make from distance as Tanari Lane gets it to go. It's a Winthrop team, which has been playing well on the road. Going back to last year, they've won 12 out of their last 13 away from home. And in the same breath, they've won 18 straight at home in Rock Hill. It'll be Auburn's basketball after our first media timeout and an early look and a lot of the 6'10", Janai Broom. Well, Janai Broom has a phenomenal road that he will end up relishing in this season. And, and he missed a little bit of practice here early on before the season got started here? Yeah, he absolutely did. And here he is with the basketball right now. I think he's one of those guys that helps take him to another level. Chance Westry on the floor for the first time. And we got a foul on the drive. So Westry, the 6'6 freshman, has been out with an injury. Pearl told us today they're going to work him into the game just a little bit. We they wouldn't expect him to play a ton of minutes, but there's going to be designed substitutions to get him in to play both point guard and the off guard. Well, what he does is he gives them uh, more length at 6'6". You got him and Allen Flanagan. It makes them more of an upper echelon team in, amongst the guards. Jumper off from Treor, the freshman. And here's Westry out of the Phoenix area. Played at Dream City Christian, was a high school teammate a couple years ago, Shaden Sharp, who was kind of one and done, but half a year and done at Kentucky. And Westry will go to the free throw line. Well, that didn't take long, did it? No. <laughs> you know, the four star prospect. I think played as well as anyone over in Israel. And right now you see not only his size and ability to jump over defenders, but his basketball handle. It's tighter than a lot of guards. He's playing the point guard position for Auburn right now, and he has the uncanny ability to get to where he wants to be on the basketball court. Last year played at Arizona Compass Press, a uh, prep, excuse me, number three in the country. And Westry makes it a three-point play. A second foul already on Casey Harrison. Reserve guard for Winthrop, who's been tasked with trying to stay in front of Westry. Yeah, Harrison actually didn't play in that first game at Penn State. Still working his way back into this basketball game. Here's Isaiah Wilson. And he's able to draw the foul on Allen Flanagan. Wilson is one of a handful of transfers that Mark Prosser has brought in. And, well, that's a necessity at every level. But even for Prosser, who lost his best player, D.J. Burns, Big South Conference Player of the Year last year, their center transferred to NC State early in the summer. So he went and found a couple transfers of his own, brought in Wilson from Richmond, where he spent two years and made 17 starts. Patrick Good. One of the best shooters in Division One finished his eligibility. So did Drew Boggs, who was at both Hawaii and Missouri and played something like 17 years of college basketball. <laughs> yeah, that's what Coach Prosser told us. But I found it interesting that what he talked about was the fact that it's just part of college basketball. Mm -hmm. He wished no ill will to D.J. Burns. He wished him the best. Westry off the mark with the three. Dylan Caldwell the rebound in Auburn. Trying to even up on the offensive side. Here's Katie Johnson. Katie off the window. Didn't go. And Treor picks up the foul. Well, Chance Westry had to have knee surgery 
kind of slowed him down a little bit. And Bruce had to do the same thing. SEC Coach of the Year last year. And their first number one ranking in school history on their way to SEC championship. Well, I think what Coach Bruce Pearl has done at Auburn is, is something that really hasn't been seen across uh, college basketball. And the reason I say that is because when you look at the coaches that came before him, the Jeff Lebos and the Tony Barbies, they obviously were doing the best that they could do at that time, but they didn't quite do all the little intricate details that Coach Bruce Pearl did. And once Coach Bruce Pearl did, he got back. He invited older guys back. He invited Coach Cliff Ellis back. He got the players in that he needed to do. He got involved with the community. It was just a little something different that helped take all over the top. Well, recruiting helps too, doesn't it? Oh, it's the difference in night and day. It's not the X's and O's. It's the Jimmy's and Joe's, right? That'll quiet the crowd for just a little bit as Lane, the sophomore to Grayson in Atlanta, it's his second. He's coming off a knee injury last year, didn't play. And had his freshman year interrupted with that knee injury a couple years ago. He was a 1,000-point scorer in high school. Off the curl, nothing doing for Flanagan. Interesting matchup. He's guarded by Corey Hightower, 6'7", fifth-year senior, who leads Winthrop in assists. Westry. And Hightower has the board. Hightower's coming off a 20-point game. Preseason first team all conference for Winthrop. Averaging 17 points, six boards, and four and a third assists. Flanagan has it knocked away, was going for the lob. Wilson trying to slip through. Katie Johnson finds it. Numbers the other way, four on two. Westry gives it up. Right down the lane, and Cardwell will be going to the line. It was like a freight train coming. Yeah, well, you know, when you're in this arena, you tend to play a little bit faster than you normally do. Uh, some teams relish in that. Right now, Winthrop is trying to find the proper pace that they want to play. Coach Prosser talked to us about that before the game. They wanted to play fast but not in a hurry, and he was concerned about them being sped up in this type of environment. So it's kind of like driving home on 85 after the game tonight when you, you run another fast car, you, your foot gets a little heavier than if you were just – your foot's always <laughs> no, I was, I was rolling with you. I was waiting for you to finish that time. <laughs> Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Yeah, Cardwell has another one coming. Dylan Cardwell. I think uh, you, you, you notice Dylan Cardwell is the guy who takes his shirt off faster than anyone else in college basketball. Remember for what he did at the football game here earlier. Speaking of football, you had a pretty good game this weekend, didn't you? Oh, the, the one here? Yeah. Yeah, it turned out to be kind of fun. Yeah, it's interesting. 87,000 people come out to go crazy with Cadillac. I'll see that every day. High tower for three. That was a weird rebound opportunity for Carwell. Push ahead. Treor. How's your French? <laughs> Not very good. A few other languages, though. <laughs> He's from Tours, France. Go on Treor. Played for the French national teams, under 15 and under 16. He's a top recruit. Loose ball will be eventually tied up, and there it is. And it will be Auburn basketball. Auburn has cooled down just a little bit, but they're shooting 53% from the floor. And Bruce Pearl's team has a nine-point lead on Winthrop. Here at Cadillac encapsulated that, so had everyone excited. Absolutely. Here's Jalen Williams with the touch. Wow. A little off balance. No whistle on that one. Winthrop last year was 23 and 9. Went 14 and 2 in the Big South. DJ Burns was the player of the year. They two years ago went undefeated in the league and had a guy leave to go to the NBA down the G League and a shove on the baseline on Jalen Williams. And Mark Prosser was a longtime assistant at Winthrop. He was under Pat Kelsey. And then one year as a head coach at Division II Brevard. Went to Western Carolina after his uh, second stint at Winthrop and was his head coach there for a few years before coming back, taking the head job. But a, a guy that worked under 
Mike Young for a time at Wofford. Yeah. Was on the Bucknell staff when they beat Kansas in the NCAA tournament in 2005. Went back with Mike Young again at Wofford. And whether it's the Big South Conference, what Winthrop does offensively, or you think about what Wofford has done with great three-point shooters, it kind of fits the mold. Like, spread you out, take care of the basketball, and be a high-percentage shooting team. Well, he's one of those guys that you would say has, quote, designer genes, right? Coming from his father. We all know what he did over at Wake Forest. Uh, it's in his blood, yeah. and, and he exemplifies that and displays that not only in his conversation, but his coaching style as well. More off the mark, the son of the late Skip Prosser, who's a head coach at Wake, took them to number one ranking in an ACC title. Had three different teams in the NCAA tournament in his first year, and the ACC coach of the year in 03, that first number one ranking. And Mark... You know, was asked about it gets asked about his dad daily, but it's funny reading an article about him recently. He said, you know, don't really get a chance to talk much about my dad because everybody wants to tell me their story <laughs> about my dad. Well, Another free throw coming for Kelton Talford. You know, as you're trying to build a program, Tom, so much has changed now. Him and Mark, the job that he's done, but. He understands that you're going to lose some guys to the transfer portal. You're going to gain some guys mm -hmm. as well. Uh, he hasn't used that as an excuse at all this year. Uh, he's coming in here helping to learn from this game, win or lose. He knows this is going to make his team better. Now, Bruce Pearl was talking to his squad at shoot around today about what's on the line for Winthrop. The night broom inside. And Jalen Williams follows not there. Another offensive rebound. Here's Wendell Green. And another offensive board. That was a big concern for Winthrop coming in, trying to keep Auburn off the glass. But Pearl made a point to his guys. He said, this is their Super Bowl. They're going to have a great year, but we are going to be the best team they play until they get through the first round of the NCAA tournament. This is their opportunity. And Winthrop in years past has found those wins, which has helped they're seeding. They've been seated as high as 11 in the tournament. Big block and another one for Broom. Defense is there. Can Auburn find some offense? They've missed nine of their last 10 attempts. Jasper got a little too deep. Now one for the last 11. Nobody on Claxton. And a couple of pump fakes trying to stay away from Broome. Result is a three from Cason Harrison. Pretty basketball. Well, it was a nice job of actually playing the basketball game inside out. Cason Harrison out of Beaumont, Texas, 6'2", 190 pounds. Brings a little poise to this Winthrop team. And right now, most of Auburn's struggles are coming from just not making shots. It's an Auburn team now. He's 8 of 22. Even the high percentage looks aren't going. Two bunnies miss, and maybe Jani Broome just padding those offensive rebound stats. Believe it or not, Tom, when you're in this situation for Auburn and you jump out to that early lead, you start to get somewhat comfortable. And that's why I think Wither can take an advantage right now, try to hang around this game and see if they can become another upset. Broome impacting another one. Auburn's got six blocks tonight and a blind shot falls off short. How do you how would you teach Winthrop to go against Janai Broom inside and try to get the ball up over shot blockers? Prosser uses the timeout. Fish means you got more time to think about that. We'll go back to our Walker <laughs> Kessler files. <laughs> Auburn up. He was smashing it. Yeah, he crushed the applesauce and he's moving on to the fruit snacks. <laughs> If that were me, there'd be a peanut butter and jelly followed by some Cheetos. Okay, you're a pe peanut butter and jelly guy. Oh, I'm basic. Corner three off the top of the backboard. And Sincere McMahon saying, I'm not that bad a shooter. He got my arm. Winthrop with a near steal. Chance nice Western pass. shares it. And Cardwell throws it down.
plus seven on the glass here early on. Hightower has it blocked. Another one for Auburn. And an injury for Corey Hightower. The collision after the block with Cardwell. Mm, he looks to be in pain, too. Really hope he's okay. He is not okay, and he's not happy. I don't blame him. Corey Hightower in Flint, Michigan, played at Presbyterian earlier than Western Carolina, where Mark Prosser was the head coach. He had a great run in the postseason, the Big South Tournament last year. It's a good sign that he's able to walk back. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of body. Cardwell at 6'11", 250, coming down all the way on that right ankle. As you said, though, good to see him being able to put some weight on it. Tough competitor fighting through. Talk about a guy who was a Big South All-Tournament team last year. He's really uh, his size. Four, four assists a game at 6'7". You can see how there's coaches in the Big South I wonder how that matchup is going to work. Sure. Might be mooted a little bit tonight. Nice scoop. And result is a foul. It's the first charge to Chance Westry. I love how Winthrop has been attacking the basket. Uh, I was watching the Tennessee-Colorado game, one of the many upsets. Uh, now, Euros Plosvich went down in that basketball game, but I thought Tab Boyles and Colorado just beat Tennessee. But the fact of the matter is, Colorado won the paint in that basketball game. And for teams right now, you can win the paint in two ways, whether it's off the bounce, which is what Witham's doing, or off of dominating glass or in the post, which is what Auburn's trying to do. I know you, you've taken the preseason tour. You've seen all the teams. The way Tennessee looked on Sunday... Is that a warning sign for what they may be, or is that just a bad day at the office? Uh, I think that was a bad day at the office, but I also think it shows that they need all of their pieces yeah. uh, to work together. Now, doing that, we saw what happened in the exhibition game versus Gonzaga. They can beat anyone in the country. Big rebound for Howard Fleming, transfer from Illinois State. And he'll put it on the floor. Down in the race by Cardwell. Another block, seventh of the night for Auburn. Westry finds the loose ball. Bruce Pearl's warning to his team was don't be sloppy tonight. We can't afford to be sloppy. This is their biggest game or the best opponent they will face. But defensively, they're not being sloppy. They've held them to 25% shooting. Well, that's where they're going to have to hang their hat on. And Dylan Caldwell had ample opportunity to play behind Walker Kessler and learn from Walker Kessler on timing and how to block shots off of the basketball. He is an excellent shot blocker. Walker's getting five and five, 15 minutes a game in the league now. Bars up to a great start with Houston. And a hand check out front, and Westry gets whistled for his second. Young basketball players that want to use inside out dribbles and step backs and shoot three point shots all day. This is a great opportunity to learn. Even when you don't score at the rim, you get fouls, right? You, you get your opportunity to potentially get your team in a bonus and that softens the defense. Let's see if Winthrop can try to take advantage of softening the defense of the Auburn Tigers. Six team fouls on Auburn. Winthrop will be shooting after the next Movement and no result. But Winthrop finds it again. Hightower back on the floor for the Eagles. That's a good sign. Yeah, moving gingerly, but it's good to see him fighting through it. And an easy bucket just kind of opened up. Talford, he's got five. At 6'7", you know, he's bouncy. Yep. Uh, even though he's, you know, only 195, maybe 200 pounds, he's actually wildly strong. He plays physical for his size. 
Cardwell oh. got his way in for the dunk. Harrison tried to reverse it and a foul tip. This is a team as Talper gets one in Winthrop, which has not been good on the offensive glass. 339th in the nation, just 9% of their offensive rebounds do they find, but they've been really good at it tonight. Well, let me fit. The, the offensive rebounds of Middle Tennessee State, along with their turnovers in the second half, as you see a nice finish by Katie Johnson. Uh, almost allowed Winthrop to give up that victory that they had at homecoming. Katie Johnson, Tom, I still think is the heart and soul of this basketball team. He made such huge plays last year, whether it was a finish uh, on the road at Georgia, uh, whether it's just hustle plays, getting a big steal. He's an emotional guy, but I think he's a guy that has to play well for Auburn to win a plethora of basketball games this year. Seeing less of him, huh? Lost some weight, down about 15 pounds. Yeah, looks good. Looks quicker, faster. Season second team all conference. Mentioned Winthrop's offensive rebounds. They've got seven offensive boards tonight. It's been a huge advantage for them, allowed them to hang around. Especially with the poor shooting, it's 29% from the floor. Flanagan picks up the foul, his second. And Winthrop in the one on one. When you look at this Auburn team, you can tell that shooting has been an issue. 18% from three when they came into this basketball game, only shooting 22% from behind the three point line tonight, and 50% from the charity stop. Missed opportunity for Hightower. KD with a burst and open three. Cardwell wasn't just, oh, I thought he was on the back. Instead, Isaiah Wilson gets whistled for the foul. Well, Isaiah Wilson, I can feel your pain. Sometimes <laughs> I think Jacob Toppin is probably going to be one of the better mid-range shooters in the SEC as well. I look for Kentucky to make a push to get to the Final Four this year. They look national championship good, and Katie Johnson went down hard there. Nobody picks up Wilson, and so he kicks it out. Lane, push shot, no. And open floor foul. We got an injury on Chris Moore. And a shot to the side of the head from Cameron Whiteside. Take it back. Whiteside not on the floor. Yeah, it takes a shot in the left side of his face, but pops right up. Chris Moore, tough as nails for the Auburn Tigers. What do you think his – talk me through Chris Moore. Like, what's his role on this team this year over his career? How does that evolve? Well, I, I mentioned tough as nails. Uh, that's his role on this basketball team. You know you have enforcers on just about every team. Yeah. Most of the time they're big men, whether it's a Dennis Rodman or a, a, a Ben Wallace. Chris Moore Bill is that. Beer. How Ooh, about that? You took them. Those young folks don't know about no, Bill Lambeer. We have to educate them, though. <laughs> but, no, Chris Moore is that guy who's going to do the little things. He's going to defend every single possession. He's going to be the hardest player on the floor. He has good physical size as well. That's 230, right? Yeah. Cadillac Williams, you can't have him. But, <laughs> but, you know, he's a guy who actually, I think, has worked his way into the starting lineup. And I give Coach Bruce Pearl credit for allowing him to stay in that starting lineup as long as he continues to earn it. And offseason shin surgery had a rod inserted in his leg. It's about a three-month recovery period. And so still working back to full strength. Three ball off the mark. Moore with the rebound and saves it. Three and a half minutes to play in the first half. And an up and down half offensively for Auburn. Just two for ten from deep. 38% from the floor. 
Tigers got off to a great start went on a 10 nothing run early but Winthrop has held pace since And the Eagles get the rebound it's Howard Fleming And it is tipped by Auburn and will stay with the Eagles Auburn coming off of a win against USF Brian Gregory squad Friday night. They were down nine at the half Brian Gregory with a defensive minded coach was able to throw some zone at him kind of muck it up a little bit and BP was talking about it. He said the one thing they did really well is they picked their spots when to run and we had some live ball turnovers and USF was able to run a little bit now Auburn came back in the second half to knock him off the George Mason game to open the season Auburn did not shoot the ball well but they've been great defensively both games and they led throughout that one well defense is going to carry this team coach Brian Gregory obviously of the Tom Izzo coaching family we mentioned Michigan State earlier but they brought in some quality transfers one in particular from the SEC and Keyshawn Bryant the ball fake and it results in a foul That's on Cardwell. It's his first. You, you talked about DJ Burns, big man on campus, big man in the Big South that transferred to NC State. But you think about Kelton Talford and the opportunity he had to go against him every single day in practice. That's paying dividends for him right now, and he's taking full advantage of his opportunity. We got a Thursday night doubleheader for you. Pat Bradley and myself will be in Lexington to see. Oscar and fourth ranked Kentucky play host to South Carolina State at 7 Eastern. And Tolu Smith leads Mississippi State against the Coyotes of South Dakota and Stark Vegas. Both games right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Mississippi State, you're bragging on them. You think they might be a surprise team this year? Yeah, we're going to talk about them a little bit more along with some other teams that we feel like are under the radar. But Mississippi State, one of the more athletic and underrated teams in the SEC. And the green throws it in. That's his second three of the night. Winthrop beats the shot clock buzzer with a triple from Chase Claxton. Remember, his brother Nick played at Georgia, down the league with Brooklyn. I guess he likes drama, huh? <laughs> Here's Jalen Williams. It was smooth. You don't think the earth is flat, do you? Where are you going with this, Tom Hart? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going with this? That's the end. That's the end of a Brooklyn Nets conversation for the night. 90 seconds left in the half. Here's Harrison. And Green's got the board. Not a bad look. Auburn just right now coming at Winthrop in waves. Katie Johnson in transition. And that backcourt depth flexing now for Auburn. And he's starting to feel himself a little bit. Winthrop now bothered. Fleming has to burn. Nope, got rid of it. Shot clock winding down. And it ends up being a bucket for Case and Harrison. How about that resilience being displayed by Winthrop? Pandemonium. The crowd was into it. Not sure quite where to go with the basketball, but poised under pressure by Harris. Tigers have made their last three. That includes threes from Green and Katie Johnson. Open up this lead. One second difference. Shot and game clock. Here's Green. The lob from 40 feet away. And Jalen Williams off the mark. And that's how the half will end. Bruce Pearl is coming all the way on the floor and <laughs> he's coaching him up. 
and Auburn able to close on a 13 to 6 run. We talked about Alan Flanagan early. Flanagan scoreless so far. Had a couple of personal fouls in the first. Wow, quick move. Talford able to put it on the deck and get to the rim. So Mark Prosser making a huge adjustment, basically spreading it out for Winthrop and saying, Talford, you use your split, your foot speed to actually go around and buy Janai Broom. And an Auburn turnover. This is a Winthrop team last year, six in the nation, and effective field goal percentage. It take good shots usually and smart shots. And now they can say it's Auburn basketball after that. Said it was tip. Talford yeah. four for five from the floor tonight. Where is Flanagan at his most comfortable on the offensive end? I think it's right here. It's just simply knocking down a simple jump shot. Uh, at times, he tries to make things more complicated than they have to be. Don't we all? <laughs> Don't we all? I'd like to thank Allen for winning the timing award of the night <laughs> and knocking down that shot. Talford with a touch. See if he goes on the floor again. Interesting that Auburn has decided to play him one-on-one. -on -one. So last year's OVC Defensive Player of the Year against uh, oh. the big man in nice. Talford. Yeah, nice seal Ooh. by Broome. Well, the ball got reversed. He's in double figures now. Well, too much underneath that one, and Claxton ran out of court. That's the effect here in Auburn Arena. You actually saw that from Middle Tennessee in yep. their previous game. In the second half, Coach Prosser talked about how they sped them up a little bit to yep. get back in the basketball game. Winthrop has to be cautious not to allow Auburn to do that here as they go to a 1 3 1 zone to hopefully change the complexion of this game. Now, Fish, you know, Mr. Neville wrote a very large check for you to not call it Auburn Arena anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, There's a the lot name outside has there. changed. <laughs> Shot clock getting late. Wendell Green, Ooh. good body control, and a tip from Broome. Does it now for Janai Broome. Had four blocks a game last year. 23 double-doubles. Claxton. Nope. Jasper, second wow. three of the night. I, you got to get a timeout if you coach Crosser. John at 10 nothing. I, mean, I think they are going to be another team that defends at a high level. The question will be, can they shoot well enough? If they knock down shots, they're going to be a sneaky team that you do not want to play here in the Southeastern Conference, Tom Hart. They're above the rim against Arkansas Pine Bluff Sunday afternoon in a comfortable 33-point win. Then they get the Coyotes of South Dakota Thursday night, part of a doubleheader. We have Kentucky and South Carolina State here on the SEC Network. Preceding. Did you have a feeling shot clock getting late laying off the mark? Did you have a feeling Ben Howland was going to step away at the end of the season? You know, I didn't know that he was going to step away, but I thought coach Ben Howland did a excellent job. He did an excellent job of bringing in talent, of really changing the perception of Mississippi State. He brought guys in there that you hadn't seen at Mississippi State for a long time. He recruited at a high level. Uh, he was right there on the cusp every single year. Uh, getting into the tournament, had some good wins. Uh, it was just a situation in which I think Mississippi State and Coach Ben Howland would have decided to go a different direction. Another free throw coming for Tanari Lane. That was a John Cohen hire in Starkville. And John Cohen now the director of athletics here has a pretty big opening on his plate with the Auburn football job. Lane makes one of two. One of Auburn's strengths last year was its bench. 
and allow Bruce Pearl to kind of work Jabari Smith in and not overplay him. And what a finish Jabari had. Kind of, you could see the evolution of his game. And they should have plenty of depth again this year. Except Jasper has another bucket that gives him eight for the night. Talk to Bruce about his depth, especially in the backcourt. He doesn't see it as a problem or any sort of conflict. He said, listen, we tell these guys coming in, don't come here. That's Talford with another. Don't come here if you're expecting to play 35 minutes a game. That's just not going to happen. We share minutes. We share the basketball. And the best players will get more minutes, but there's plenty to go around. And another quality player, another five-star signed by... Coach Bruce Pearl and the Auburn Tigers yesterday, and he's going to be playing that position right there at Wendell Green at the point guard as he knocks down another three-point basket. Six and Claxton draws a foul from Zepp Jasper. A lot of depth of that backcourt. Some guys who are now coming out of the shell shooting the ball well tonight. Did I say Opelika earlier? You did. No, well, I made a mistake there. You, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's a different but, story. But, but, <laughs> you, you see that, and you can't think. Yeah. You can't not think of NIL because of so many people doing it across the country. But I think it was a terrific signee and somebody to coach Bruce Pearl and their staff excited about. Trey Donaldson, freshman out of Tallahassee, running the floor here early. By the way, Arkansas signed five-star Bay Fall this afternoon. He's the third highest ranked uh, Arkansas signee since they started giving out stars. So that's a big get for the Razorbacks. Auburn was one of its finalists. And an injury out on the perimeter to Cardwell. He took a shot to the eye on that drive and finish by Cason Harrison. Coach Eric Musselman once again has done a phenomenal job back-to-back -back elite eights and the recruits and talent that he's been bringing into Fayetteville, Arkansas has been second to none. How about this? Cardwell drawing blood. Clark Pearson will take a look at that. Ooh, just a little inadvertent. Was that the elbow they got him or the shoulder? Had to have been the elbow, right? It was quick. Tyson quick. No, if it's that quick. <laughs> Broom back on the floor for Auburn. And he had a block from behind by Talford. Auburn gets it back, but a spin. Trey Donaldson with a little mache off the glass. Donaldson did not play the first half. He's been a burst of energy here this second. Great pass inside. And Trey will go to the free throw line. You talked about the 6'2", 190-pound freshman out of Tallahassee, Florida. And he does a nice job of not giving up on the play. A little hang time in English with the kiss off the glass. Brings that football mentality and toughness to this basketball team. Coach, Coach Bruce Pearl said, two-sport athlete in the class of 2022. Play quarterback. Yeah. He played quarterback for a guy who played some quarterback in his own right and played in the NBA. Mm -hmm. That will be Charlie Ward. Yep, yep. Florida State University High School. You know, I think we talked about the depth a little bit earlier. Yeah. And at times, that can actually be a challenge, right? You can have guys that are uncomfortable, feeling like they're not getting enough minutes. Uh, I don't see that from this Auburn team right now. I think it's going to make them better as the year goes on. Brooms got 14 now, and he is... Clean it up. Talked about the double doubles he had last year. And he's got another double double tonight, 12 and 10. And we got guys coming out of their shoes. <laughs> That's how you know you got fouled hard. He knocked your shoe off. Right 
And Janai Broom really showing you that his first jump isn't as important as his second jump. You got some guys in the game of basketball that have a quick second and third jump. And that's Janai Broom when it comes to hitting the offensive glass. You see KD Johnson talking smack to Isaiah Wilson. He's in his ear after the hard foul. So much so that Wilson finally walked by one of the officials and said, hey, man, can we get this guy to calm down? Treyor, and it's stripped. I don't think anybody can get Katie Johnson to calm down. He wants all the smoke, and he wants it all the time, Tom yeah. Hart. But, you know, with the, all the upsets that we talked about, uh, obviously you had out of the ACC, Louisville that got upset earlier. Yeah, lost to Bellarmine. Florida yep. lost last night to Florida Atlantic. Yep, yep. Tennessee, Colorado. We talked about that. TCU goes down as well. Yeah, Northwestern State got him. You want a guy like Katie Johnson on your team. Oh, and this guy, too. And there's the whistle. And he'll go to the free throw line. <laughs> How about Trey Donaldson comes up smiling? We talked about that football toughness and yeah. mindset. You love guys that don't shy away from the physical contact, and Janai Broom has shown he's not one of those guys tonight. Donaldson's got another one coming his way. We mentioned Charlie Ward earlier. For you young folks who don't know, Charlie Ward played football at Florida State, and he was the Heisman Trophy winner. And then he went on to the NBA as a first-round pick of the Knicks. Played for the Spurs and the Rockets, too. That is, we talk about two-sport dudes. That's a guy that a lot of times gets overlooked. There's another two-sport dude out there that people are talking about by the name of Deion Sanders. Heard of him, Tom Hart? Yeah, I heard of him. <laughs> Not walking into that one at all, huh? No, nah, you, you think he might be coming here? No, you know, I, I, I lean to my football experts like oh, Tom Hart and Cole Kublick to ask that type of question, you know? Claxton with the follow tip. You, you've got enough people in your phone that you could get an answer right now. Oh, by the way, one of them's an Auburn man himself and Charles Barkley who may have some insight as to whether or not he would like to see Dion as a head coach in the Plains. Absolutely outstanding catch and finish <laughs> by Trey on the real top. <laughs> That's a pivot. You know, you know, it's a heavy pivot. Heavy, heavy. No, this is a young guy that I really think has a bright upside. You know, we we talk about guys that have come through this program and excelled at different times, whether it's been Chumo Kiki, who's playing with the number one draft pick now, and Paolo Bancaro with the Orlando Magic. Uh, you talk about Isaac Okoro, JT Thor. Uh, these guys, when they come and they play in a system where Coach Bruce Pearl says, our 10 are going to be better than your 10, have found success here. And I think Treor is going to be another young player who finds himself at the NBA. You want Treo from Torres, France, a five-star rated number one player in the state of Arizona. And Katie Johnson is going to have to calm down. He's going to pick up the foul here. It's still chirping and charged with the tech. Now, of note, a couple of possessions ago, Todd Austin gave him a warning, and he did not heed said warning. <laughs> First of all, you'd always rather have competitiveness versus apathy. But as a player, you have to always make sure that you maintain control of your emotions. In that time, uh, Katie Johnson allowed them to get out of hand, but you see him continuing to communicate, conversate to the officials. Great officiating crew here on hand tonight. Oh, it's a big time crew, right? We got Tony Green, Rob Wark, and Todd Austin. They call Tony Green the grandfather. No, the godfather. Yeah, they call call he might be the grandfather, but I don't know. <laughs> Godfather's a little bit more respectful, I think. Oh, man. Stepped in that one, you didn't you? You could have let that one go, Tom. <laughs> I thought it was just me and you having a conversation. <laughs> I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Aggressive defense by Trey Donaldson results in a personal foul. 
It's the first for Donaldson. Just harassing defense by Auburn here in the second half. Lane's leaner is good. He's having a good second half. A couple of games ago actually had a career high. You know, Lane's a guy who can put up numbers in a hurry, both him and Hightower. They've got weapons on this team that was preseason second in the Big South. Here's Katie Johnson, and he stepped on the sideline. It's pointing to his toes. It was the heel. Yeah, this is a team, you know, you watch an early season college basketball, we appreciate it. Uh, this is a team in Winthrop that you're likely to see in the NCAA tournament. They have a chance, as they have, they've won two out of the last three Big South Conference titles. Actually won a tournament game in 2007, knocked off six seed Notre Dame. They've been to the tournament more than any other Big South program. 13 championships, 11 trips the NCAA tournament in and out Talford and Broom picks up the foul love that battle by Talford though on the interior 65 39 lead when we return we'll get into happy birthday Sonny First shot good for Kelton Talford. Sonny Smith once got me to the Memphis airport with a land speed record. We had a Memphis game that ended an hour before my flight left. We had to get out of FedEx for him through downtown Memphis and to the airport in time for me to make my flight home. Otherwise, it would cost me about six hours of travel time. He drove about 90 miles an hour in his big body Cadillac with Jan riding shotgun, and we made it with plenty of time to spare. A trip that I will never forget. Can't go wrong when you got a Cadillac. <laughs> so, was that your Auburn football coaching comment? All knocked away. Janai Broom has 18 points tonight to go with 13 boards. You can tell he's excited in this basketball game. Hasn't played the way he would have liked to thus far in the season. And I know for him, the staff is excited to see more of what they expected from him coming into all. This is what they expected. Is that fair? Absolutely. Good cut. Oh, my gosh. He jumped right over him. And then a walk. Wow. What a play. I didn't think. Guys just age played leapfrog. <laughs> well, so busy looking at Janai Broom jump over him. That's yep, definitely moved that left pivot foot. I'd move my pivot foot too if 235 pounds was <laughs> coming right over the top. Here's the 1 3 1 again. Where does Auburn want to go against the 1 3 1? Well, you want to try to get it to the baseline. That's a great job right there. Always want to try to get it to the baseline against that 1 3 zone. Converge, make it move, look for short corner. Auburn kind of settled on that play. Howard Fleming played at Illinois State a couple years ago, led the Valley freshman in assists. Claxton's playing with four fouls. Here's Lane. And Winthrop just four for 15 from deep. Trayor all alone. And Tanari Lane commits his second. For Winthrop right now, you think about the schedule that they played. Obviously got a win at home in their homecoming game. Uh, they lost against Penn State earlier. Uh, Penn State off to an outstanding start. They had a good two-possession win against Butler last night. Uh, but they will be ready come Big South play because of the schedule that they are playing here early. Traor has got another one coming. We got week 12 of SEC football coming your way Saturday beginning noon Eastern number nine, Alabama Austin P that's on SEC Network Plus including the games at Starkville and College Station Western Kentucky here on the plane to take on Auburn at four and in a chilly Fayetteville it'll be 
Number 11, Ole Miss, taking on Arkansas. Maybe Auburn fans want to keep tabs with what Lane Kiffin is doing. <laughs> you think? Yeah, there might be some interested observers. Flanagan just never got his balance on that play. Well, he's grimacing as he gets up, uh, playing with a little turf toe uh, that happened in the previous basketball game. But, you know, we talked about it earlier, making the simple play. He's, he's actually extremely athletic. He has had the best combine times of anyone mm. since Coach Pearl has been here. Uh, and so when you think about athleticism, uh, quickness, speed, uh, he's got that covered. For him, it's going to boil down to what happens in between the ears for him. And he gets them both down. All five points for Alan Flanagan coming in the second half. Alford just battling in with Broom. Nice. And quick ups by Lane. Broom wants the lob, doesn't come. Nice move off the glass, Wendell Green. Wendell Green doing a much better job this year of making decisions on when to settle for the jump shot and when to attack the basket or win the pass. I think he's become much more comfortable playing his role as not just a scoring point guard, but a floor general for the Auburn Tigers. What is that? What does that look like in your eyes when you talk about being a floor general? Well, you have to not only control the pace of the basketball game, but you're literally the coach on the floor. And for Green, he's got to decide, even though he could probably get a pretty good look at the basket every play, He's got to decide when it's time to get a guy like Jalen Williams inside or when it's time to focus and get Janai Broom a touch or KB Johnson. With this depth on the basketball team, he's got to control the pace of play, and he's got to try to keep everyone happy while at the same time playing to his strengths. Another one coming for Sincere McMahon out of Western Carolina by way of Indianapolis. Played at Christmas Attics High School. Does that name ring a bell, Christmas Attics? From a high school perspective, high school hoops. A guy by the name of Oscar Robertson played there. He was pretty good. And they have three Harlem Globetrotters from the same high school over the years. Oh, when you think there was some talent? I love it. I love it. Well, you, as soon as you mentioned the big O, it was over. That's right. Average a triple double. You kidding me? No numbers for Winthrop. Harrison is a transfer from Lamar. And the ball knocked away. Wendell Green with a five on three shoots a three. Babakabola has it knocked away. And Pearl able to go into his bench here in the second half. Another foul on Winthrop. And that'll put Auburn at the line. And Coach Mark Prosser staying pretty calm on that sideline. That's the fifth on Claxton. By my count, uh, Greenville native. Remember his brother Nick played at Georgia. Great defensive player. Dad Charles also played at Georgia years before, before going on to the league with the Suns. Absolutely. Not okay. as big as his brother no, I, or, or, or dad. Yeah, that's right. That's what I noticed when I first saw him today. 6'7", buck 85. But still plays with that same tenacity, that same grit, toughness, heart. Didn't have a great night tonight here on the road. And so Alan Flanagan at the free throw line. Little Rock native. Basketball in the family. Of course, his dad... West on the staff. Grandpa Alfred was his head coach of his high school team. West is a point 
guard here. Mid 90s. Harrington's got another one coming. And right now, Coach Bruce Pearl has multiple players that played at Auburn on his staff. Wes Flanagan, Marquise Daniels has now brought oh, yeah. on Bryant Smith. Turn around. Jalen Williams aboard. Throws it up and in. And that's what I mean when I say this Auburn team can come at you in waves. If you're looking at that scouting report, there's going to be a lot of weapons that you have to prepare for. Wilson had another one challenged. Wendell Green, numbers, three, got it. 14 for Green, his fourth three of the night. First two games combined, Auburn only made nine threes. Tigers have splashed down eight this evening. Well, that was easy. Well, you talked about the threes. Winthrop has seen this before. Penn State had a program record 18 threes. And right now, just no answer for the Auburn Tigers. I know you watched that Penn State film. You felt like they just couldn't miss. Talk with Prosser today. He said, I was really pleased to find out after the game was a school record. <laughs> Have a Wendell Green tonight. We said he was the biggest little man on the floor tonight. Miller, you can see the job that he's done after coming off of that injury. K.J. Williams, uh, I think that Coach McMahon has really done a phenomenal job in simply getting his guys to buy in. The culture was there. They were playing hard. They were playing together. I was thoroughly impressed with the job that has been done. The cupboard is certainly not bare. Shot clock expires on Auburn. Seven minutes to play. Give me your overview of the league as a whole. Just, just your 30,000 foot view. The strength, top, middle, bottom. Uh, I think the bottom is stronger than what people probably know uh, because most people didn't go and see those teams like I did. You think about people whether they're on the East Coast or West Coast, they just don't get down there. The, the coaches that came into the league may not have had as big of names as you have had in the past, but I think it's going to be a competitive league, and I think it's going to be a league that once again has seven plus teams into the tournament. The question will be which one of those teams or if the teams can advance with Arkansas being the last standing team with a couple of lead eight, elite eights the last couple of years. Yeah, last couple of years, great postseason there. And a, a league overall fish that's got a lot of young talent, more five stars in the SEC this recruiting cycle than anywhere else. Sure. Should we expect then to teams be on a learning curve over the course of the season with the key role a lot of young players will be playing? W will it take time to find, like, look, for example, Jabari Smith was a top three pick at the end of the year last sure. year, but he wasn't necessarily at the beginning, even though we all knew he had the talent to be so. Absolutely. Well, and, and Arkansas is a prime example of that. Coach Eric Musselman, I think, is going to continue to uh, have his team prepared. He's a guy that coaches with a different motor. You know players that play with yeah. a different motor, he coaches with a different motor. But I like the teams that have a lot of veterans that are back, uh, like a Tennessee, like a Texas A&M. Uh, I, I think the league is as deep as it's ever been. Nice move by Casey Harrison. He's into double figures. The Auburn lead is 30. Talk with Pearl before the game about some of these upsets in college basketball. Low to mid majors coming up with some big wins early. And he was quick to point out that the low to mid majors now are A, getting a different quality of player. Sure. And they're more experienced than they've ever been with the transfer portal and guys still having a COVID year available. And I would say that has hurt your programs like a Winthrop, right? Uh, you know, Coach Prosser wasn't complaining about this, but the fact is, DJ Burns was a guy who left late in the spring. And so the time that you have to try to replace him, prepare for him, makes it more challenging 
on coaches that may be in the Big South or the OVC or Conference USA. And so that's what we're dealing with in college basketball right now. If you bring in a freshman, you develop him, he plays well, you have to be concerned about coaches from the high major or power conferences being able to get that player and keep him from staying on your team. Uh, Kelton Talford has had a very good game given his opposition tonight. 16 points on 6 of 9 shooting. He's got a double-double with 13 boards. And he's had his hands full with Janai Broom on both ends of the floor. But the junior from Great Falls, South Carolina, has acclimated well. Another board for him. Harrison able to draw contact and Cardwell. Bandage and all. <laughs> <laughs> Sends it to the first row. That's one way to make your presence felt. Because of the job that Walker Kessler did last year, I think Dylan Caldwell got lost in the shuffle. And I think he's going to really make his presence known for Auburn this year. Uh, the way he blocks shots, he's improved. Uh, what he's got to do is try to be able to establish his post game in order to take it to another level. Defense has been there. Cardwell has four blocks tonight. Trey Donaldson the board. Rodney Donaldson the third. Looks more like a Trey than a Rodney to me. What do you think? You think so? Yeah. <laughs> Turns it over. And it ends up in a bucket on the other end for Winthrop. And Xavier McKelvey, his first bucket. Treyarch can do that. That'll stretch some defenses. A lot of big programs wanted him. Gonzaga, Kansas, Tennessee, and Houston. Yeah. Westry lost his sneaker. Treyarch says, I'll take care of it. Back-to-back -back buckets for the freshman from France. Yeah, Trey R has really displayed thus far in the season his ability to simply outrun opponents. That's something when you play Auburn, you're going to have to pay, prepare for is the way this young man runs the floor. Auburn up 80 for Mayhem, leading the nation in block percentage. He has blocked 29% of the twos taken when he's been on the floor. That is... A ridiculous number. Can you repeat that? 29% of the twos? 29% of the two-point attempts when he's on the floor, he's gotten a piece of. It's pretty good. Where'd you get that number? Tom? I make most of them up. <laughs> five blocks against George Mason, Kim English's squad, a five against USF. He's got four blocks tonight, and he's dressed like Nelly with the bandage. <laughs> he's just learned that he picked up the foul. Now he's part owner of the Hornets, isn't he? Not only is he part owner of the Hornets, but he, he displays what happened in this game. It definitely got hot in here <laughs> <laughs> for, for the Auburn Tigers. <laughs> you, You're you think a about, lunatic. Listen, listen, we, we had a, what they, what, what they say, they, they shot 18% coming in this basketball game. How about the second half? The second half, they're nine, or no, five of nine from the three-point line. Yep. That's pretty good. That's better 50, than the cornbread 55. at Acre. <laughs> Just kidding. Nothing's better than the cornbread at Acre. They reviewed that, and something happened, but we're unaware. Sincere McMahon to the free-throw line. And we're told it is simply a common foul. Another common for McMahon, who had Christmas Addicts and Indianapolis was a 1600 point score senior year. He was city player of the year in India averaged 26 points and five assists a game Yeah, the Western Carolina transfer didn't have his best game tonight We said he was going to be key right yeah. the matchup between him and Wendell Green and uh, he just hasn't played extremely well I think he's been challenged with the size and length uh, and the athleticism the physical toughness of Auburn 
And a hard foul on Jasper will be his third. Came crashing in. Roman has come crashing in this entire night, Tom. Plus nine on the offensive glass. They had 19 second chance points, and they have out rebounded Winthrop by 20. Mm. Next up for Auburn, Johnny Jones, Texas Southern squad. They showed well so far this season before Bruce Pearl Seam will head to the Cancun Challenge. This is. Um, this is like a bracketed game within the Cancun Challenge, I think is what they call it. It mm -hmm. doesn't, as much as I love this village on the plains, doesn't feel like Cancun today. <laughs> I've got you covered. Okay, thank you. And a tee time at Kapalua. Fleming knocks down the free throw out of the timeout. Winthrop showing more zone in the second half than they did in the first. Cardwell lost the handle on it. Corralled by Lane. Somehow the Eagles keep it alive. Lane too strong. Auburn defense has forced 10 turnovers, scored 10 off of it. This has been impressive to me, though. Uh, you, you look at other teams that have been having dominant performances. One of them played against uh, Winthrop earlier in Penn State. Uh, but your Baylors, your Houstons, the teams that are competing to win national championships, North Carolina, Dukes, Kentuckys, they're, they're playing with a different edge, a different mindset right now. And you just can't turn it on and turn it off of those Thanksgiving tournaments. I've been impressed with what I've seen from Auburn thus far tonight. Vanderbilt's looking for its first win, trying to hold on on the road against Temple. That one's late, and there's a splash down from deep for Tanari Lane. He's got 16. And Kentucky in a dogfight with Michigan State. That's a two-point game on ESPN. Welcome back, Dickie V, by the way, calling Woo! that game tonight. So good to have him back. Westry. Keeps it himself. Yeah, he's really good. I think I might have to move him up on my spotting chart. <laughs> we talked about the depth. He's going to be in there. Period. Nice pass. And Lane taking advantage. No quit in him. He's got 18. No quit in the Winthrop Eagles, frankly. They just ran into a buzzsaw here. Uh, versus Auburn, similar to Penn State. Auburn got hot from behind the three-point line. Dominated them on the glass. Auburn has held Winthrop to 36% shooting. To your point on the glass, it's 51-32. Mm. The Eagles, since the under 12, have outscored Auburn, but... Auburn went on a 10 nothing run to start the second half. They started the game essentially with a 12 nothing run after giving up the first bucket. Nice pass. And Cardwell throws it down. McMahon. Off the mark. And Auburn's going to hold on to go to 3-0 and on this young season. Winthrop gets off one more. And McMahon just beats the buzzer. Allen almost brought the rain. First three of the night for McMahon. And Coach Bruce Pearl still coming.